All right, so now we're gonna talk about our three different types of aquifers, and we're going to start out with the first one, uh, which is our unconfined aquifer. Now this is just an aquifer or a water table that's not constrained by any features in the surface. It's very similar to the one we just drew. So if we have our landscape, okay, something looks like this. So we have this topography. Again, this is a side view. So there's a tree. Um, our aquifer is going to generally follow the surface of the land. So it's high where it's high and it's gonna go back up. Okay, so there is our water table. Okay, um, here in an unconfined zone, the water table generally, again, follows the land surface. Um, water moves from high to low, so the general movement follows the topography, the gradient. Um, and if you have an area where this is a river channel, or a stream channel that cuts below the water table, this is uh, the groundwater is adding to the stream. It's flowing into it and it's inputting into that stream. It's where the water source is. So we just want to remember it follows the topography. Okay, and that water flows down the gradient. Okay, and then again, just like we um, had in the past image, it's going to, the water table itself will rise and fall depending on the inputs and the outputs. So it will have some seasonal variations. All right, our second type of aquifer um, is going to be the confined aquifer. So kind of, following through with that, it should make sense that in this case, there's something that's constraining or confining um, the location of that aquifer. Um, so we really see this between uh, two Im impermeable layers. So it's uh, an aquifer between two impermeable layers. Okay, so if I were to kind of draw this, um, I often think of like our mountainous areas that move like this. Um, and what we can imagine is some different rock layers. So we might have a big layer that has some shale or a clay bearing layer something that's impermeable to flow. So water doesn't want to move through it. And then we'll put another one right here. So it's between these layers. So places with layered topography that's undergone folding or even some faulting. Okay, so those are our two aqua ludes. And then we're going to have in between that We'll have this one as a sandstone, so it's nice and porous, lots of open spaces, and the water can flow very easily through this layer. Okay, so the confined aquifer is going to exist between these two. What happens is that water is going to, if it flows here on top of this impermeable layer, it doesn't get to the bottom, so it flows off as runoff. But here in the mountains, precipitation is going to enter into the stream and eventually it's going to fill up the layer so that I'll just put more purple dots over this so you can see that this is that zone of saturation. And so all of the pore spaces down below here are filled. Uh, now some interesting things, this area where the water can get in is called our recharge zone. I'll put this over here. So we have the recharge area where water can get in to the aquifer. Um, and this time the water is going to be um, flowing down. So we have a lot of water that's over here. This line again is our water table. And it will go up and down in this direction. Okay, um, so water is flowing. There's a lot of 
um, hydrostatic pressure pushing the water down through these rocks so it's kind of filling in these spaces and the water here is under a lot of pressure it's kind of like the uh, soda can it's it's all pushed into that whole area so um, if we were to decide to put in a well down here what happens is that there's so much water pushing in that the water, we'll put it in purple, it flows up and out of this well under um, this, because of this hydraulic pressure. So what happens is from our water table, kind of draw this as a dash. This well is sitting well below the top of the water table and this surface here is called our um, potentiometric surface, okay? And if we're below this surface and we put a well in here, there's so much pressure of that water pushing down that the water flows up and out. Um, this special condition is called an artesian well. And it's a well where the water flows out without having to be pumped out of the well. It just flows naturally up and out because of that hydraulic pressure. All right. Um, now, if we were to go and put a well, let's see, we lived up in the mountains and we wanted to put a well um, up here. Let's see, someplace where the surface of the land, there we go. So the land surface is above this potentiometric surface. So the water will start to flow up, but once it gets to where the water table is, where that surface is, it stops flowing. So then we're going to have to actually pump it out. So this is called a sub-artesian. Sub-artesian well. So um, it's built within one of these confined aquifers, but we are going to have to pump the water out to get it out of that, uh, out of that well and use it. So again, so here the water in our confined aquifer is pressure driven. So the water is going to move down gradient. And then it is pressure driven. And it can lead to these artesian conditions, okay? All right, so we have one more type of aquifer to look at. And this one is our smallest, generally. These are our perched aquifers. Okay, so these are kind of localized areas and I'm going to draw, again, a side view. So we'll have our land um, and then down below this, we will have some point where we have our unconfined main water table. So I'm just gonna write main water table. And in this case, it's an unconfined, so it's not being constrained by any specific layers. What happens with our perched aquifer, we'll just imagine this is mostly sandstone, but we have some areas where we have these lenses I'm just going to draw them. That's a terrible color. That one's not working anymore. I'll just draw this in orange. We have these lenses of less permeable rock within the sandstone. So this is pretty common. You'll get a sandstone deposited and it might have some layers or little lenses of a clay, a, a clay -lit rich layer. So what happens here when water flows through and infiltrates into the ground, here the water is going to continue down until it gets to that main water table. But any of this water that's flowing here will hit this lens and it will start to build up. And it will create a little pocket of water, which is our perched aquifer. So that's the perched aquifer. In this case, we've drawn two of them. Okay, so the water above these perched aquifer flows laterally. So it's 
going to flow off to the sides. It will kind of build up because of surface tension. It will have the height to it within um, the pore spaces above it, but the water is flowing out to the sides. When it gets to the edges, it will dribble off and then kind of continue down. Here, where the land surface has cut through this rock layer and this more resistant clay rich layer, this um, aquitard, um, meets the surface, the water flows out and this creates natural spring conditions. Okay, so if you're ever at a place where you have a cliff surface and there's water that's flowing out of the rocks and then dribbling down the sides, if you look very closely, you'll see probably a small lens or a layer that's restricting the water movement. So the water's flowing laterally along the side of it and then coming out as a natural spring off the side because of that perched aquifer. All right, um, and that is a quick summary on the three types of aquifers that I'd like you to know about.